the relationship that Collins has with OPL is, is great. We've been working together for close to 25 years. Uh, shortly after I started the OPL back in 1998, purchasing aircraft, outfitting them with systems, benefited the Collins Research Enterprise. If you have funding and a research challenge, we totally thrive on that. This is what we're looking for in our daily operations is doing really cool projects that are absolutely fun and amazing to work with and operate with neat equipment and awesome people. One important aspect of what we do here at the OPL is testing early prototypes in live flight. Typically, flight testing happens towards the end of a life cycle. Why not test it early? Put it on an airplane that is very highly instrumented and supports early prototype testing so that you can find out what does and does not work. And then you can change it much cheaper than if you had to wait changing a fielded system uh, that the cost effectiveness can be several orders of magnitude. And this early TRL testing has certainly allowed Collins to grow their products more economically, be better stewards of taxpayer money, developing government systems with early prototypes and tweaking them to perfection with relatively low cost flight test assets that we can provide here at the OPL. It's really expensive to go install on a government aircraft and bring a whole team to Alaska or bring a whole team to an Air Force base and, and spend days or weeks or, or even longer testing on a remote area. And it's taxing on everybody to go do that. The ability to get a full day of flight testing is so much more efficient. We can go do that repetitively. So we fly one day, it doesn't work. We fly the next day, it gets a little bit better. We take a break, we come back and we do it again. And we can really maximize the amount of change and improvement that we can get in a system while saving Collins and saving the government a lot of money in the long run. Cause then we can hand the government something that has been flight tested dozens of times. And so we can have confidence that it's good and they can have confidence that they're getting something that that's really been wrung out. And we didn't pay huge sums of dollars to go do that. We started getting into directional uh, data link systems. Uh, now we call it DLOS-D or FEMI. FEMI is a program that's developing directional communication for our warfighter. Most communication systems that uh, the warfighter uses today are omnidirectional. And as we get into uh, more highly contested battle spaces, as we look at adversaries who are more capable, that starts to become a detriment to our warfighter. When we have systems that radiate energy in every direction, they're easier to be detected. When we have systems that collect energy from every direction, they're more easily jammed or interfered with from adversaries. Instead of radiating energy in every direction, we should really just send the energy to the person that we want to communicate with. And that when we go to listen to that person, we should only collect energy from that direction too. What we set out to do is take the work that was actually happening in the commercial 5G sector, where they're developing directional communication for things like cell phones and tablets and laptops, and see if we could take those hardware advances and pull them into the DOD sector and add on top of them uh, communications that are relevant to the warfighter. Can we realize the low swap C solution that allows the warfighter to get into the highly contested environment, but is still affordable and is still really small? And what that's helped us do is develop it and find issues, find things we didn't know about really early. Very soon after we had a working prototype system that we could show in the lab and, and, and we were confident enough in that we kind of shook out all the bugs that you could check on lab. We got the system onto the five inch pod that was flown here on, at OPL on the uh, L29 jet. We found so many issues we hadn't even been thinking about. And it also forced us to integrate with a real aircraft. We really had to think about taking an aircraft power. We really had to think about temperatures and the dynamics and the, and the vibrations that are associated with an aircraft. And there's something about forcing you to do that that makes you think through issues that you might otherwise have missed. This is part of how we think about developing our system. It is full of things that have never been tested before, never been tried before. And, and the only way to know if that's gonna work is to go do it. After we had flown a series of times, what we've been able to 
do by doing this continuous evaluation is a couple things. It's increased our speed, increased our, our readiness. We we're able to actually take those results and bring them to the government and say, here's what our system is capable of doing in real flight testing. They were impressed with the system and wanted to give us the opportunity to stress test it even further. We were invited to participate in an event called Northern Edge. The exercise is an opportunity to test new technologies that are relevant to the warfighter. And I was also able to go and test uh, a, a larger version of that system on an agile pod in our L-39 ZA aircraft at Northern Edge. Partnering with OPL has been essential in reducing the risk uh, of the FEMI program and also showing the viability. We did significant flight testing at OPL and really made sure the system was ready for a primetime event where we would have a government sponsor there to validate all of the work that we had been doing. There was two portions of that. We installed on an MQ-9, which is a, a drone owned by the government. And so we took the pod that we had literally flown on the L-29 dozens of times here. So we knew it worked, we had confidence in it, we felt good that it could go on to a government aircraft. We installed it and we flew it, test flew it on the MQ-9 there. In parallel, we had our Agile pod set up, which is a, a longer pod that has a little more space and we have multiple radios installed. OPL flew that jet to Alaska where we installed the Agile pod there. So we had two assets that we had tested thoroughly and then those were taken up to Alaska. And then our team brought all of our ground stations, our mobile installs. We brought both those systems up to the range and established an airborne network of uh, very high bandwidth directional communications over the, the Alaska range. We flew every day of the exercise, and this is an operationally relevant environment. So we got to be on a government aircraft that had new integration issues to think through. We were in an environment that really looked like what a, an adversary environment might look like. For about three weeks, we were up there experimenting uh, different constellation and configurations, expanding range, and testing throughput of that DLOS-D system in an operational context. We were able to learn more about the system. We learned things that we fed back into our kind of continuous development cycle. And we were able to show the government that we really are maturing the system and are ready for the, the future places it might go. The, the sense of collaboration that we uh, get from these experiences is, is tremendous. And OPL has been able to, to grow its base of operation from no airplane to having a total of seven airplanes and a bunch of unmanned aircraft as well. We're so proud to be able to work with uh, Collins Aerospace on these many projects.